Darshan Yatra is in Sivaganga in Tamil Nadu. You have to have a special guest on the bus. The guest needs no introduction. Karthi Chidambaram ever smiling? Um, are, are you are you facing the heat? Are you feeling the heat? How bad is the heat? There's no heat. It's going to be a stroll in the park. It's going to be a stroll in the park. We guys are figuring out, you know, the Tamil Nadu um, heat. How to beat it? How do you beat it? By keeping a cool head. Karthi, the idea is to get, you know, newsmakers on the bus. We talk about the issues. We go around looking at the city. It, it's a beautiful city of Sivaganga. Is, is it? Koi, yes. Yes. Is this crying for development? A lot of people we've spoken to say that where where is development? We wish we had better roads, better infrastructure. Is, is there more possibility that could have been done? Well, there's always room for improvement, but you got to understand that the bulk of the onus on development falls on the state government, and you should really be posing the question to the ADMK, which has been an ally of the BJP, which ruled the state for the recent ten years. Yes, so that's where the onus of your question should be. But there are atrial roads here, which have been funded by NABARD, which have which connect the constituency very well, which have all been brought in when my father was the member of parliament here and was the finance minister of India. You spoke about uh, P. Chidambaram, your father. Now he's held this seat for seven times since 1984. Uh, you're also, you know, contesting the seat again. Uh, what is it that you know you've seen the changes over the years? What is it that you've got to your constituency, Karthi? Only somebody who's visited this place often will realize what kind of development has happened. I mean, we are. We have three government colleges here. We have a medical college. We have a law college. We have an agricultural college. And then this is an exceedingly well serviced by the banking sector. This is thanks to my father. And we have a plethora of banks, a plethora of ATMs. In fact, during the demonetization, self-inflicted wound, it is these banks and these ATMs which was actually a lifesaver for many people. And then we have, I mean, as far as it's, it's still a quite an arid area. There is a lot of room for improvement, but there is the, there's a CISF camp. You ask me what my father has directly brought here. There's an ITBP camp here. There's a, there's a battalions of both of them are stationed here. There are three Kendra Vidyalaya schools. Uh, there is a, 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 a spices park, which was actually neglected by the by the NDA government all these years, and which I've just revived it. So a lot of development has happened. I and mean, if you actually look at um, banking penetration in terms of student loans, in terms of farmer loans, in terms of business loans, there's been there's been this district will score over many other districts, uh, many other similar districts in India. And when you come to Tamil Nadu, you, you realize that there's a lot of conversation about Tamil pride, about Tamil culture. And somewhere this narrative that is getting uh, created by the BJP here, uh, that both the Congress, the DMK, the ADMK are all parties against Tamil pride, Tamil culture. Is that true? I think the BJP's understanding and connect with Tamil Nadu is zilch. They really don't get Tamil Nadu at all. The BJP's uh, idea of India is uniformity, whereas our idea of India is diversity. We find unity in diversity, where they find they believe that uniformity is unity. We completely digress with each other on this uh, on this topic. And the BJP's understanding of India is terrible. In fact, they believe in this one this one that, and they don't appreciate the nuances of Tamil culture, Tamil tradition, and Tamil sentiment. And they get it all wrong, actually. Why do you say that? When the Prime Minister comes here, we are being told by the BJP that he's very popular. A lot of people speak about the Prime Minister. He's there in the media, so he's noticeable. That doesn't mean he's popular. Uh, and if you're all over the place in the media, you get noticed. That does not mean people accept you. And he's the only Prime Minister who drones in Hindi when he comes to Tamil Nadu. No other Prime Minister drones in Hindi when they come to Tamil Nadu. They make the effort to speak in English. He tries, he says that I'm learning Tamil, so did Amit Shah said this, that give me some time, I will learn Tamil. I can take all the time in the world, I'm looking forward to their speeches in Tamil someday. What about Rahul Gandhi? Rahul Gandhi, he also doesn't speak in Tamil, are you saying he also doesn't have a connection? Exceedingly well accepted here. There is an emotional bond that people have with the Gandhi family, also because of the fact that unfortunately Rajiv Gandhi was assassinated in Tamil Nadu. And there is, there is a... Uh, there's actually a blood bond with the Gandhi family. And Rahul Gandhi come, always comes across as somebody without airs and is very self-effacing and down to earth. And the fact that his language is very inclusive and not hectoring like the Prime Minister's, that makes a big difference. And Rahul Gandhi speaks in English when he comes to Tamil Nadu. 
So you want the Prime Minister to speak in English when he comes? I don't really want him to speak. I just want to... You don't want him to speak at all? Because he's nothing... I, what he says is not true. So I really don't want him to speak. Here. Did you watch his interview? He, he spoke for the first time after the BJP's manifesto. He's spoken on a number of issues. He's hit out at both the Congress and the DMK over the Sanatan insult. Common? Uh, I think he's, he's getting it all wrong. He doesn't... See, we are, we are far more Hindu than anybody else. Per square kilometer. Look at my constituency itself. We have far more historical temples here than anywhere else. We in Tamil Nadu, per square quiet kilometer. We have more tem more Hindu temples. We break more coconuts than anybody else in the whole whole of India. We are more Hindu than anybody else. But we are not. But we don't practice the Sanskritized North Indian upper caste vegetarian Hinduism. Okay, now that is a loaded statement. Loaded. Do, do, do you believe? Do you believe it's about also the fact that the BJP is wanting uh, to push a narrative, Hindi imposition, eating habits. Yeah. I mean, is is that the fear? Hindutva, the BJP's Hindutva is set is centered around a, a North Indian Sanskritized upper caste vegetarian narrative and a vegetarian construct that doesn't gel well with the practice of the faith here. The pride. We are. I am. I am exceedingly religious myself. I mean, I, today is Tuesday. I went to a Muruga temple. There is no concept of Muruga in the north of India. You don't even have that concept. When you say that perhaps the Congress is more Hindu than any other party, then... The Tamil Nadu is more Hindu than any other yeah. state. So, a, so, so for, the, for the BJP to come and he, to the lecture us about Hinduism doesn't gel well. We are, uh, we practice the faith in a particular way. We are, we, we, we are a very temple-going, uh, religious, I would even use the word uh, superstitious and orthodox people. But the BJP BJP's construct of the of the the narrative doesn't gel well with the way we practice the faith on a daily basis. Then why wasn't the Congress cobra seen at the Ram Mandir? And what about the comment of Sanatan that was made by Udayanand? Temples and temples. People made a choice. I mean that that's not the centrality of the faith here. I have no problem with people going to the temple, but that's not here. We are at the uh, the, 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 the huge Shiva temple here. This is this dates back thousands of years now. You come to Pillar Pit, which is right behind my house. It's got it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a Ganesh temple temple was 3,000 years old. So, you know, historical temples are here. It's, 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 so there's, well, people who are believers will go to a temple, but that's not, but the whole beauty of the Hindu faith is there's no centrality of a temple. There's a temple, there are temples and there are temples, and there are many temples. So we are not an Abrahamic faith uh, uh, where we believe that there is a centrality of a place for you to go and have, have pilgrimage. Any, any, and people, some people go to their village temple, some people go to their, to, to another deity. So it's, that's the beauty of this uh, of Hinduism, but the BJP's construct is to try to make it into an almost into an Abrahamic faith, which is not the which is not the case. What does the Ram Mandir mean for you? I mean, it's one of the ten avatars of Vishnu. I accept that. I accept that. There is, but there are enough. If you go, to, if you go to temples in Tamil Nadu, like the Sri Rangam temples, these are temples in which there are historical, uh, which are which are mentioned in the epic of Ramayana, which is written by Kamban itself. So there are temples which have been predate. See, there is which predate the, the temple which was, which was perhaps there in Ayodhya. There are temples which which have reference to Ram even before a, 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 a temple was there in Ayodhya. See, for example, the Kamban Ramayana. I mean, doesn't mention a temple in Ayodhya, but the Kambaramayana mentions other things about Ram traversing through other temples. That's the Ramayana we read, and that's the Ramayana most of us follow here. I mean, I have absolute faith. I am, I'm, 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 I'm a Shaivite by birth, but I'm also, uh, I'm a Vaishnavite in practice as like anybody else. I, I don't have that distinction. But, uh, but this, this to say that that is the centrality of the whole religious belief is wrong. It is a temple. Yes, I respect it for being a temple now. It's become a temple now because there are certain rituals one needs to follow to, for it to become a temple. It's become a temple. But there are other temples which are equally or more important than that. So. It's not the most important temple in my faith. You're saying Ram Mandir perhaps is not the most important temple in your faith? Definitely. Did, for, me, did, for me, I'm a big believer in Pillar Betty. I go to Pillar Betty uh, maybe 50 times a year. I go to a Bhairav temple and a, uh, and a fort in Tirmayam. I go to so many other temples. I mean, so, and there are people who would swear by uh, Tirupati. That these people would swear by uh, other temples. As some, I go to the Mugambi temple in, in Kullur in Karnataka. So, it's all a matter. That's the beauty of Hinduism. Not to somehow drive everybody to one particular place is actually diminishing the beauty of the beauty and the substance of the faith. Did the Congress are in not participating in the Ram Mandir no, Pran Pratish? Took, and I think they left it to individuals. There were individuals who went there, but as a because it was it was I think the party rightly perceived it to be not just as a, a consecration of a religious event, but it was more of a of a political show because the political leadership was of, of another party was practically taking over the event. So they just let it pass. So, but that is but uh, let me be very clear. We have we, we have no I mean I am 
I'm perhaps one of the most orthodox uh, followers of the faith within the party. We have all respect for the faith. I, I, I consider Lord Ram to be one of the ten avatars of uh, Vishnu. Nine have come, the tenth hasn't come. Let's be very clear about it. And there are temples for every avatar in many parts of India. And Tamil Nadu has temples for all the nine avatars in many parts of Tamil Nadu as well. But do you think that this is going to be a huge talking point now on Ram Navmi? This is tomorrow going to be the first Ram Navmi at the new uh, Ram Mandir temple. Does this put the Congress in the back foot? Not, not at all. Not in Tamil Nadu. Our narratives are very. But elsewhere, what about the Hindi heartland? You people are fighting there. Unless I speak the local language, I don't think I can understand the people very well. I'm only I only speak Tamil, so I understand Tamil Nadu. And Tamil Nadu, that will never be an issue. No offense meant. If people have belief, they will have belief. We, the whole point of us, our narrative is that we want church and state to be separate. We don't want religious discourse and religious beliefs to be mixed up into the politics of the day. Another important thing that the BJP keeps reiterating time and again is the Parivarvad. You know, the fact that this constituency that was first led by your father gets handed over to you on a platter. He says you haven't done anything here. I mean, it wasn't handed over to me. The first election I contested, I lost. In 2014, I lost. So it wasn't handed over to me. I lost an election and contested in 2019 and won the election. So I didn't I didn't win the first time I contested. So it wasn't handed over to me. There was no handing over. I had to but win. You were the natural choice, perhaps. No, 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 nobody else wanted to contest in 2014. We didn't have an alliance partner. So no, there were not many people who wanted to contest in 2014. I contested in 2014. I happily contested. And we got a decent amount of votes. I knew and we lost. But in 2019 I contested and I won. That's it. So where was it handed over? And what is this business of this whatever word you use? What parivar? Parivar word. So what about the what about the BJP? What about what about the BJP's alliance partner PMK? It's a family private limited party. I mean, led by the father, handed over to the son, and now the who's with Raj Sabha MP, and the wife is contesting the Lok Sabha. What do you say about that party? Or what do you say about the TDP? So if a party is alliance with the BJP, they they somehow become meritocratic, uh, and the parties are align, not aligned to the BJP, they become a dynasty. And what about the dynasty? Within, for every dynasty you name in the in the Congress, I can name one in the BJP as well, or I can name two in the BJP. But they say at least the BJP is not controlled by the Parivar at the top, unlike the Congress. Well, that's a choice the party makes. Why are they concerned about the leadership of our party? It's a willing choice we have made, and we are comfortable. The rank and file of our party is comfortable with that. So why are you? Why why is it that? Of a concern to anybody else, how we choose to run our affairs. Why is that? We are going to the people. That's it. Why are you? Why are you? You know, getting angsty about that? It's a choice we make. Okay, you say it's a choice you make. What about corruption? Is corruption a talking point? More so because there are serious allegations of corruption against you. No, no, there is no allegations against me. It's all made up, foisted just for political reasons. I hope you read the charge sheet. If you read how frivolous those charge sheets are, they'll all be, they'll all die a natural death in the in the court process. I, I don't know. I don't think you've done your research team has uh, adequately briefed you. They are frivolous charges against me. Calling them frivolous. Charges. No, not even frivolous. I mean, I mean, if there's a word which I could go down below frivolous, I'll, I'll choose it. But I, right now, it's not popping in my head. So are you saying you're being targeted? You're being unfairly targeted. Why? Because my father is the most vehement and fiercest and articulate critic of the BJP. That's why. But there are a lot of people in the Congress who are once in the Congress have you know jumped ship up to the BJP. You allege BJP is a washing machine because you know the moment you walk in everything gets clean. But the truth is that there are skeletons in their cupboard. Isn't that true? There are charges of corruption against all the leaders who moved away from uh, the Congress. But then, then it all ends once they join the BJP and everything becomes kosher after that. What happens to uh, Hemant Abiswa Sarma, what happens to Ajit Pawar, what happens to everybody who uh, switched over, everything becomes kosher after that. And how many people in the BJP get summoned by my, my favorite agency, DD? They're not an egalitarian. You can, you, can, you can spin it as much as you want and you know the truth that, that things are not uh, done in an even-handed or in a professional or in a bipartisan manner. It's not. It's completely partisan. It's completely targeted. You know that. Has Karthi ever thought of switching sides? No, I can't because you see, the Congress is the only party in which I can be comfortable. You have to understand, I'm an I'm a liberal, I'm secular, I'm a free marketer, and I'm an international globalist. So I cannot fit into any other party else in the Congress. No other party will act me. The BJP is a regimented party. I don't think a free thinker like me can ever fit into the BJP. You don't think the BJP is a free thinking party? What about so many leaders who have jumped ship? I don't think they have free thinkers at all. I think they've all given up a lot of their... They, 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 they've become hypocritical in their own lives. So I don't think free, free thinkers can fit into the BJP. A free thinker like me, I consider... I mean, only the Congress party will give me the space to be myself and still and give me give me the platform. And only the Congress party. No other party in India will ever, will ever be able to tolerate me, if I could say. Tolerate you? Tolerate. Because I am, I am a free-spirited person. 
Okay, I'm, when, I'm when, grateful for the Congress Party for that. And, and when you say that, a long time ago there were a lot of reports that you know the state unit here did not want uh, you to be fielded from this particular constituency. One of your interviews where apparently you hinted that there is no match to Modi anywhere, not even Rahul Gandhi. Well, again, that, that interview was in Tamil and of course it was lost in translation when it reached uh, Delhi, I guess. All I said was nobody is there to beat Modi in propaganda. In propaganda. propaganda. They, they, they conveniently left out that word. And I still stand by. There's nobody to beat Modi in false propaganda and in, and in hyperbole, and which, only, which, which only Modi's, uh, Prime Minister Modi is very, very good at. Who do you think is a better match for Modi? Who can beat Modi today? Well, I think the people of India are realizing very quickly that they want a, a more secular, a more inclusive, and a more humbler government. That is. So we are not necessarily, we don't need to put up a person. If you ask the rank and file of the Congress party, they'll overwhelmingly say that we want Rahul Gandhi to be the leader, or the Prime Minister. So is Rahul Gandhi willing to take on that responsibility? Once post-elections, if when, when things come, and when, when we have to see, we have to sit around the table, we have alliance partners. If the, if the Congress party has to make a choice, the Congress party will naturally uh, pitch for Rahul Gandhi. You, you think he's your biggest asset or the BJP's biggest asset right now? No, no, he's an asset to the party because he, there is an emotive bond which he and his family have with the party and it's a cohesive uh, glue for the party's uh, unity. I, I completely believe that. And when you say that, there is this entire conversation about a north versus a south divide also going on. Is, is there a divide? Is there a real divide? Yeah, there's a real divide in the sense that the BJP is a Hindi Hindutva party. And their narrative and their whole uh, construct of India is a very Hindi heartland construct and that hurts us, even in terms of revenue share, in terms of even, even, their even the way they communicate, even the way they name every scheme. Even, can you name one scheme of the central government in a language other than Hindi? Why can't you name one scheme in Tamil? Why can't you name a bill in Tamil? Why can't you name something? Everything is so Hindi focused. It's all Hindi this, Hindi that, and it's 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 it's, it's annoying for us. Are you against Hindi? I'm not against Hindi, but I'm definitely against the, the imposition of Hindi. But who's imposing Hindi on it you? Is, it is by by naming every law. It's in Hindi. Every naming every program is in Hindi. You are imposing on us, and uh, and uh, but giving it pre, uh, predominance and preeminence over any other language. It, it is it is you are thrusting it upon us. The minister was also asked this question about the north-south divide yesterday and he said, I believe in inclusivity. He says, I believe in all, you know, religions, all people, all faith, everyone working together. It's the opposition that wants to create this fear and a paranoia. We are not creating the knowledge. It's their actions which are creating the fear and paranoia because they are targeting the minorities. They, 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 are, they, 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 they target religious practices even within the Hindu faith which don't fit into their narrative. So there, is, there are many things. They are not an inclusive party. They are an exclusive party. We are the inclusive party. We are the inclusive alliance. Okay, you, you again and again insist that you're an inclusive alliance. Now in Tamil Nadu, when you're with the DMK, a party again that is embroiled in charges of corruption, Parivarwad, much like the Congress, you think that's a winning combination? Parivarwad, which, which, what, 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 what is this again and again? People come up and throw themselves into the electoral fray. It's up to people to accept them or reject them. How a, how a party chooses to have its leadership structure, it's up to the party. If you don't, if you're not happy with the leadership structure, just step out. Why do you keep on, uh, keep harping about it? I don't understand what is this uh, angst you have against parties when they choose their own leadership structures. You're not happy, leave it alone. But what about the BJP itself? I mean, I could name so many dynasties who, 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 are, who, are, who, are, who are given a leg up there in, within that party. So why is Mr. Rajnath Singh an, uh, an MLA? Why is his son is an MLA? The, the, the Mundes are given, the, the Mahajans are given preeminence. The, the Vasundar Raji's son is an MP. I mean, I could, they're all my friends. I'm not taking this against them. But to, to keep on harping about this, this is as if some sort of a, a, a an issue only within the Congress party is wrong. I mean, what about the TDP? What about the PMK, which you have allied with, uh, the BJP is allied with? What about the Shiv Sena when it was an alliance with you? What about the Akali Dal? I mean, I, what about the Paswan party? The Paswan party is, is, is uh, uh, father, uncle and son. I mean, I mean, do you have an alliance there with them? What, that's, that don't, that, you, that, uh, this stain doesn't uh, fall on them. It's complete hypocrisy on the BJP. You say, well, this is hypocrisy, not issues that matter to the voter at all. What do you think has been the biggest uh, challenge right now for the Modi government? What, where, where have they failed? If there are three areas. Price rise. Price rise is the number one area. Everything. Price of gold. Price of uh, fuel. Price of uh, cylinder. Price of even soap. Price of toothpaste. Price of uh, coconut oil. Price of slippers. Price of bags. Price of every single item has gone up. I can give you a list. 8 rupees soap selling for 20 rupees now. 40 rupees toothpaste, 70 rupees now. 70 rupees coconut oil, 240 rupees now. 50 rupees cable TV, 250 rupees now. 
सिलेंडर थाउजेंड रुपीज गैस फ्यूल ओवर हंड्रेड रुपीज गोल्ड क्लोज टू सिक्सटी सिक्सटी थाउजेंड रुपीज प्राइस राइज इज गॉन अप प्राइस राइज इज द बिगेस्ट इश्यू रेसिटिंग एवरीबडी है But why is it that the prime minister says that if, even if there is a problem, people trust the BJP or Narendra Modi to solve the problem, not Rahul Gandhi or the Congress? They trust the Modi or the BJP in Tamil Nadu one bit. They trust Rahul Gandhi. They trust the Congress party. They trust the DMK alliance. They don't trust the prime minister in Tamil Nadu. Does this mean that the prime minister has higher credibility? Are you saying across the country? I don't know. He's more popular. No, I'm not familiar with what what people think in other countries. Unless I speak the language, I don't interact with people. I only read what is there in the media, so I really don't know. But in Tamil Nadu, I know the people of Tamil Nadu trust Rahul Gandhi infinitely much more than they trust Modi. What happens once you move beyond Tamil Nadu? The other southern 130 seats, whether it's Karnataka, Andhra, Telangana, Kerala. I think we're going to do very, very well in Karnataka and uh, Telangana and in Kerala as well. What about Uttar Pradesh? I don't know about Uttar Pradesh. Should Rahul Gandhi be contesting from uh, Amethi? It's a choice he has to make. It's uh, up to the UP, the UPCC to make the choice, not for me. I don't really understand. It's not for me to. But like you are here sweating it out. You're in your constituency working for the voters. Why, why did Rahul Gandhi, like the BJP says, run away from the Amethi battle? Not true. Why is it? Why? Why? Why does Mr. Modi run away from uh, Gujarat? Why doesn't he go contest in Gujarat? Why is he run away from Gujarat? What is what kind of charge is that? He can he can travel across the the breadth of India to go contest, and Rahul Gandhi can't. Why why is that? He is also left his home state. He is contesting somewhere else. So Rahul Gandhi can do the same. Why not? What about Priyanka Gandhi? Should should she be uh, you know more vocal during this campaign? We haven't seen much of her though. She is very well liked. I mean, uh, people look forward to her coming there. Yes, there is a connect. People of Tamil Nadu really have a connect with her. Uh, Whenever she comes here, she is tremendously welcome, and there is a lot of uh, enthusiasm for her. Uh, we haven't seen Rahul or Priyanka campaigning for you. Why is that? No, no, they make choices. You see, they have to travel to a lot of places. They made a few choices to travel to a few, uh, few constituencies. They have come to uh, Rahul Gandhi has come to a few constituencies in Tamil Nadu. That's the chart they made. But uh, the Chief Minister of Tamil Nadu campaigned for me. Is all well between you and Rahul Gandhi? Everything. Perfectly fine, and people forget the fact that Rahul Gandhi and I were in Cambridge together in the, in the early 90s. What about today? What about 2024? How close is Rahul Gandhi to you? I mean, we are fine. You know, he's a, he was the former president of the party. I'm a, hopefully a second-time MP now. Our relationship is perfectly fine. It's very cordial and it's direct and fine. Do you think Rahul Gandhi does not understand the challenge? He is not leading this battle from the front. He is. I think he's taken on a great load, and the fact that he went on the Bharat Jodo Yatra not once, twice, I think has enhanced his image greatly. And the fact that, uh, and the fact that he's, uh, he's shown tremendous uh, determination and courage, is, has got a lot of resonance with the people. I think it's not easy what he did. It's not easy being Rahul Gandhi. It's not easy what he did to doing Bharat Jodo Yatra twice. I mean, he does come with a, a legacy. That he's got privileges with the legacy, but he's also gotten gotten the burden of legacy, and he's also got the traumas of the legacy. Let's be fair about that. I mean, for somebody to see those kind of um, um, uh, assassinations at a very young age, it's, you know, it's not easy. And he's, I think he's come out admirably, very, very well, uh, the, you know, seeing through those personal tragedies. What is your overall estimate of the numbers, the Indian Airlines numbers? All I know is it's going to be 40 love in Tamil Nadu. 40 love in Tamil Nadu. What about what about the rest of the country? I don't know. I don't. I, I, is saying. Karthi only focused on his yes. seat in Tamil Nadu, not not the country? You and Hindu myth a mythology or a Hindu Itikasa example. I'm like Arjuna, completely focusing only on the target in the tree. But you would want the Indian Airlines to win. I want the Indian Airlines to win. I want us to form the government. I hopefully I'll also be part of the cabinet. That's what I want to do. So which is the ministry you're eyeing? Home minister. He wants to be the Home Minister. Okay, I, I think this is Karthi as candid as it can get. It's been a fascinating conversation. We've been looking at the entire constituency here. Not the entire constituency. Yes, just just a bit of the constituency where the election yatra bus is going. And uh, Karthi says that he's brought in a lot of development and change here. No, no, you have to please understand. I mean, I'm sure your your viewers have taken civics lessons. An MP is not the Sultan of the constituency. He doesn't have executive powers. It is the state government which has got a greater input in this and the central schemes. The MP can't. Can't implement anything directly except for the MP lads. So let's be very clear. When people sometimes go ask these questions, what are they brought to the constituency? MP can't really bring much to the constituency other than make sure schemes are implemented. If the government is well uh, well tuned to the MP, they can ask for something special. All I can say is the BJP has been been power for 10 years in uh, in India. They have not brought a single special scheme to Tamil Nadu. They have definitely not brought anything to Sri Lanka. Neither is the MP who was there before me. Who was an ADMK MP. Was an ally of the BJP. Has he brought anything special? But every time I have been in uh, an MP or my father has been an MP, when the state government.
government or central government has been tuned to us, we have brought in special schemes to the constituency. That's the crucial difference. Okay, one last bit. I want to ask about the ADMK here in Tamil Nadu. Is ADMK even a force to reckon yes, with? They are the second largest political party in Tamil Nadu. They will finish uh, uh, second in all, uh, all the seats in Tamil Nadu. They are uh, still a grassroots party. They are not. They don't give interviews to English television channels. They don't have a great social media presence, so you don't notice them. What, what about Anna Malai? Uh, you're giving him a magnifying glass and a megaphone, so you're, not, you're noticing him. Are people noticing? People seeing the change? Perhaps he's promising. What do you mean? He said people. Who are the people? People uh, who are who are in, uh, in Delhi uh, uh, sipping the, uh, the, 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 the coffee in Starbucks? Are you talking about people in the street in the morning? When when he say people, who are you referring to? And he also has these uh, hugely successful yatras. You know, we've seen a lot of crowd. Perception, they don't see. Your perception is usually successful. We know the results when they come out of the fourth, and you know whether they're successful or not. The BJP, yes, is more visible, but it's definitely not more acceptable. Okay, and just the last bit: how much you'll give to the BJP now in Tamil? I'm not giving them anything. I'm giving them zero. You give them zero. Zero seats. Zero seats to the BJP. What, what about the vote share? Will it go up? I don't know. It might, might marginally, it might marginally come because they have an alliance anyway. They have alliance with multiple parties. So, so here they have an alliance with the AMMK, which pulled a decent amount of votes last time. Then they are an alliance with the PMK. So we really don't, we'll never know their own vote share. We'll never know their own vote share because they are an alliance. All right, it's been a pleasure, Karthi, talking to you, wishing you all the best for the fight. And th no this fight. is, th there is no fight here again and again. Says he says the heat is also pretty nice. Please, please, please have some chutney and food. I hope you go, you would like you, you, you eat uh, for foul meat and fish and not a not a not a North, North Indian Sanskritized vegetarian. So please enjoy the food. We'll please enjoy the spicy uh, meats we have here. Our, our food is our chutney and food is known for its. We have a very specialty fowls like patridge and we have uh, uh, we, 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 the coast is quite nearby, so we get some exotic fish as well. And our meats are also very good. So I hope you savor all of them. Yes, it's been a spicy conversation. He says he hopes the Indian airlines come to power and he's going to be. Be the Home Minister. So on that note, Everybody President. Will why. <laughs> Everybody will understand why. All right. Always a spot, Kati. Thank you for speaking to us.